Hey everybody, it's Quincy from All Ears and I am here at Disney's Port Orleans Resort Riverside with a brand new video. This resort just reopened today from 19 months of closure, which is crazy to say out loud. And I'm super excited because we're gonna do a full resort tour. This is a fan favorite resort for the All Ears audience, so I'm really excited to take a look around. I hope you are too. Let's get going. <laughs> at Port Orleans Resort Riverside, you can either head straight to your room building if you've got it in the My Disney Experience app from your mobile check-in, or you can head to the front lobby to get all checked in and have your luggage taken to your room as well. Right out front of the lobby is Bell Services and Luggage Services, which is a great resource for if you need to drop off your luggage before your room is ready or leave your luggage after you check out. Like other Disney, Walt Disney World resorts, this resort does have the direct to room mobile check-in option. You can do this in the My Disney Experience app in advance of your trip, where you just check in with all your details and then day of, they will let you know when your room is ready via push notification and or text message. This is reopening day here at Disney's Port Orleans Resort Riverside. So there's a red carpet laid out for guests. There are balloons and banners and a lot of cast members out here greeting folks who are heading in for the first time since it closed. Heading into the lobby, you can see that this resort does have a steam boat theme. In fact, the lobby is supposed to be your registration for your steamboat voyage. Disney's Port Orleans Resort Riverside is a moderate resort that is themed after the romance of rural Louisiana. This is one part of two sister resorts. The other one is French Quarter, which has more of a New Orleans vibe, but this one has more of an Old South rural vibe. The resort is uh, located in the Disney Springs area, and it is actually a short boat ride to Disney Springs. The rest of its transportation is bus, but uh, you can also do a short walk to the Port Orleans French Quarter once that resort reopens as well. This is also a large resort with 2,048 rooms. That's a lot of rooms, so this place can get pretty busy. A lot of the common areas can get rather crowded. That's just something to keep in mind. Check-in desks are to your right as you walk in, and this is a really beautiful room. You can see the steamboat's fictional destinations. Well, the destinations aren't fictional, they're real places, but you can't actually go there on a steamboat from here, but you can see them up on the ceiling. There's a lot of pretty light in here, and chandeliers, and these giant, very weird fans. I don't know if those are doing anything. So concierge is in here. This is where you can check in. I checked in using the My Disney Experience app, so I get to skip the front desk and head straight to my room. And we have a pretty special room, so I think that we should go check that out. So check-in is at 3 p.m., but if you, oh, it's a heavy door, but if you get here, if you're planning on getting here a little early, you can note that when you check in in the My Disney Experience app and your room might be ready early. I've noticed that on reopening days, the rooms are ready at like 7 a.m. Mine was ready at 7 a.m. this morning. But um, yeah, you can, you can just note when you'll be here and maybe your room will be ready early. That is not guaranteed. Check-in time is at three, so that's when it's guaranteed that your room will be ready. I mentioned we have a special room. You know how it's really great when cast members call me princess even though I'm a grown up and it makes me happy. We're staying in a royal room. So like, talk about, talk about princess status. They have themed royal rooms here and I'm super excited to give Bud a tour and to show you guys. So the 2000 rooms at this resort are split into two areas and we're gonna give a full look around a little later after we check out the room. But the two areas are Magnolia Bend and Alligator Bayou. We are in Magnolia Bend. The buildings in this area are themed to be more like Old South mansions. Like they're all white and beautiful and the landscaping is gorgeous. And then over in the Alligator Bayou, a lot of the rooms are themed to be more like down country, rural South, charming little um, like houses and things like that. So very, very different vibes on either side of this resort. I'm excited to see both today. You might remember when we toured Disney's Caribbean Beach Resort that we stayed in a themed pirate room. Port Orleans Riverside has a similar offering with the royalty rooms. Those rooms are princess themed and they are located here in Magnolia Bend in some of the further buildings. You can actually tell that there are royal rooms before you even get into the room because the landscaping outside of the buildings with the royal rooms is accented by these pennants with the princess's names, Briar Rose, Belle, Diana. I don't know 
Why that one says rose red? Is that a reference to Belle or Snow White? The rest of them have princesses' names on them. You are a mystery. And this bird just scared me. Um, he's hunting for food, and I've learned that you can tell this because they do this weird wibbly wobbly thing with their necks where their head stays still and their body stays still, but their neck wibble wobbles. Wibble, wobble, wobble. These buildings have like the big sweeping white columns and like wrought iron railings and things like that that really make them look old south. And the princess area has a throne. I'm sitting on this. We have made it to our room. You can open your door using whatever media you have, whether that be a room key, a park ticket, your phone, your magic band. My magic band is linked to my reservation, so I can just click right in. Oh, oh yeah. Princess room, baby. Sometimes when I get to my resort room, I just want to put all my stuff down and then head right outside and start seeing all the cool stuff outside. But this room is so cool. I think we have to start in here because I'm feeling royal. Also, I just realized I'm wearing, I made a mistake. I'm wearing this pirate shirt because I was like, Louisiana pirates. Um, I'm staying in a princess room. I should have worn a princess shirt. All right, just at first glance, I can tell this room has more female elements than the pirate rooms at Caribbean Beach. So I'm super excited to look around because there's some pretty cool stuff in here. So right when you enter the room, you come in through your door, you've got your standard room occupied with Peter Pan thing. And then you can see that this room is absolutely gorgeous. There's a lot of beautiful theming details. They do feel very royal. Um, it's about 314 square feet, so not the largest, but certainly not the smallest. Right next to the door, you've got this really grand window with these gorgeous draping curtains. Now, interestingly enough, this resort does have blinds. And I'll tell ya, I can't open them. <laughs> Oh my gosh, they're so hard to open. Like literally I'm using my full, like I'm using my left arm, I guess, but oh man, that's like as far as I can get them before it gets too hard for me to pull. I don't know if maybe I am doing it wrong, but I've tried it from all the different angles. This is about all I can do. Now granted, this is a like pathway, this is a hallway. So I don't know if you'd want your blinds open anyway, but we have a nice view of the courtyard. Um, with the hedge mazes and the fountains and closing them's a little easier, luckily. But you also, of course, have blackout curtains. Um, no privacy curtain, no like sheer curtain because of the blinds, which is interesting. I haven't seen that at any of my resort tours before. All right, so the first, the main event in here is these big murals on the headboards. So these rooms, because this is a Louisiana hotel, are royal rooms, but they have a heavy focus on Princess Tiana. So you've got this like vignette from the Princess and the Frog with the evening star is shining bright. But here's what's crazy. Are you ready? There's fireworks. Who needs a fireworks view when you can have fireworks in your room, on your bed? They're so cute. I got really excited when I found these. There's a big finale part, it's my favorite part. Ready? Here it comes. Pew, 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 pew. Wishes! <laughs> the headboards are actually really intricate even outside of the vignette. You've got all these gems, you've got the T for Tiana, and even behind where the pillows go, there's this big heart decal sort of thing. You are heart, that's a flower. But you might hit your head on that. I don't know. I feel like that's the kind of thing I would do. <laughs> Even the smallest details of this room have a princess theme. For instance, the coat hanger, you have Cinderella's carriage on it. And if you look up at the like false wood molding, you can see a lot of sidekicks. There's Chip from Beauty and the Beast, the three fairies from Sleeping Beauty, Jeannie carrying the lamp, uh, Jacques and Gus Gus carrying Cinderella's slipper. And then that repeats around the room. It's so cute. Maybe my favorite, de I don't know. I don't know how to pick a favorite detail in here. Even the air conditioner is like heavily themed and it's got a pretty wide uh, top to it. That's actually where I would suggest putting luggage because this room does not have a lot of storage. All right, here you've got sort of your seating area and this is very, very cool. So you've got these very royal looking chairs around this little round table and you've got your enhanced cleaning measures, but then you also have printed on the table this welcome letter from Tiana that says, welcome all. We are so excited to have you stay with us. My friends and I have shared so many wonderful moments here that this has become a very special place in our hearts. As you make yourself at home, you'll discover some treasured mementos my friends have given me over the years. Enjoy making magical memories with your friends and family in my royal guest room, your friend, Princess Tiana. And some of those magical mementos are kind of tucked all around the room. This very regal, like a gold lamp has hidden Mickeys in it 
And then a lot of the furnishings in here are gold. It feels very royal. It's not very pink, which is what you might think when you're expecting princess. It's not very pink. It's very gold. The first thing that caught my eye when I walked in, actually even before the beds, were these silhouettes of the princes. And I just have to say, the prince from Snow White looks so silly. I, I don't think that's what his hat looks like from the side. But it's really cute. You've got like the eight main princes are featured on these little pennants. And as we're looking at sort of the space in this room, which there's a good amount of walkway space, you'll notice that that is printed on the carpet, the magic carpet from Aladdin. So if you wanna, you know, go flying, show show a whole, a whole new world, you can get on that carpet. I can show you this room, shining, shimmering, splendid. So view-wise, this room is technically classified as a woods view. Um, and woods means garden at this resort as well. There are also river view rooms, standard view rooms, and pool view rooms. And then some other room categories include rooms of king beds. There's a few rooms with fifth sleepers, Murphy beds. Um, and then there are preferred rooms as well. And not all of them are royal themed. The royal themed are a separate special tier of room here at Port Orleans. Continuing on, you've got the dresser, which has a smaller TV than I've seen at other resort hotels, but the room isn't very large, so I think you'll manage, and lots of gold details on that dresser there. Interestingly enough, there's like HDMI ports and things here, so audio inputs. So you might actually be able to plug up your own devices, which is not very common at Disney World Resort hotels nowadays. The ever important coffee machine, Cuisinart, not Keurig in this room. And then you've got an ice bucket, also important. Then dresser wise, we've got a cabinet with the mid-sized fridge that you can find in Disney World hotel rooms. You can fit a good amount of stuff in here, um, a lot more than those little glass door fridges. So these are my preferred fridge to have. And then you've got drawers over here, three of them, and they're relatively sizable. Not big enough for a suitcase, but certainly large enough to unpack into. More fun princess details incoming. So you've got this framed portrait of Tiana, and it is holographic so she kind of like turns and looks at you while you move which now that I think about it it's kind of creepy like Madame Leota ish but that's fine um and she has framed her portrait in this beautiful frame that must have been gifted to her by Snow White I recognize that kind of carving so that's really cool and then this ottoman here is from Beauty and the Beast it's one of the living ottomans that's why it has feet <laughs> thermostat ever important and a few other like necessary details there's no closet in this room but the bathroom does have a rod for hanging your clothes plenty of coat hangers extra pillow and blanket and an iron and ironing board plus built into the wall a safe for your valuables so these rooms do feature two queen size beds and something to note about them is there's no under bed space at all so definitely going to limit your storage significantly compared to some of the more recently refurbished rooms, which have a lot of underbed space, which is why I think that ottoman and then that window space is going to be sort of where it's at when it comes to your luggage storage. There are connected rooms offered at Port Orleans, and this could also be a great spot to put your luggage if you don't use the connecting rooms. Also something to keep in mind when you're booking your Port Orleans room is that this resort does have a few pet, rim, pet friendly rooms. So if you're looking to bring one or two dogs along, you certainly can. Of course, Tiana has posted photos of all of her friends, Snow White, Jasmine, Cinderella, Ariel, Belle, Rapunzel, and Aurora. And I love this little gallery wall, it's so cute. I think any princess lover would love that that detail exists. No bedside table on the outside edges of the beds, but there is this one in the middle. It is smaller, so if you tend to have a lot next to you while you're sleeping, you might wanna account for that here. There's not going to be a lot of bedside table space, but you got your hotel phone, your guide to the magic, and an outlet built in. You can tell that this room has been refurbished. The beds do have these top lights um, that look down. There are no reading lights that are more targeted. So if you've got like light sleepers, you might not be able to read as easily while they're trying to sleep. And then this button here is what activates the little fireworks light show. Heading into the bathroom, it is interestingly not separated by doors. There is a curtain. You can pull it all the way across the entrance to the bathroom so that you have privacy. And there is a door that shuts off the actual shower and commode room and full length mirror so you can see me do this double vanity not as much counter space as i've seen elsewhere but it's certainly not the least there's plenty of space for you to have makeup on the counter and things like that 
There's body lotion and facial soap featured in this room. And my favorite detail about the bathrooms is look at the faucets. They're teapots. Lovely double mirrors with more of that gold trim, these beautiful flower shaped lights. And then you've also got a hair dryer and some spare towels and toilet paper under your sink. There's a different molding in here that features Ray, Sebastian, Scuttle, um, and then Pascal. <laughs> Who is this turtle? <laughs> and then headed into the bathroom. It's a pretty small room, but you've got your commode room, plenty of towels for you, and your standard bathtub and shower. It's got a lot of ledges actually in here. So if you do bring your own toiletries, you've got places to put them. You've got the refillable Disney toiletries. These do get refilled between guests. So you've got shampoo, conditioner, and body wash. It's good because it's environmentally conscious. This fun tiling here in the wall and then gold details. Pretty good, to, um, pretty good pressure as well. You'll also note that Ariel must have gifted this shower curtain to the room. There's sand dollars, thingamabobs, hidden Mickey, and dingle hoppers, all sorts of things. That must be Ariel's. And that's pretty much the whole kit and caboodle. So it's not a super big room, but it definitely is adorable. Um, there's a lot of really, really fun details in here. And between this and the pirate rooms, I have to say they really hit on the theming a lot better in these rooms. So I'm pretty impressed, actually. All right, and you know what time it is? It's bed science time. Royal bed science, commence! Oh. oh, this is comfy. Yeah, this is a standard Disney bed. I always get nervous with the themed beds, especially the ones in the pirate rooms where like, they were in pirate rooms. So I don't know. But this is definitely a standard Disney bed. I could fall asleep right now. Definitely a standard Disney bed. So um, I think anyone could get a good night's sleep on this. I have these on my way to my house right now so I can sleep like I'm in a Disney hotel bed every night. Something important to note is that the Royal Rooms are the highest category of room, room here at Port Orleans. Um, and rates do vary just around this resort in general. Standard view rooms tend to be around $255 to around $430. Woods view rooms tend to be around $270 to around $440. Pool view rooms tend to be around $275 to around $435. And then king bed and preferred rooms tend to be around $315 to $470. So that just leaves us with the royal rooms, that highest rate which tend to be around $315 to around $500 if you visit during the busier times of year. All right, we've got a good sense of the room. So now it's time to go look around the rest of the hotel, which I'm also super excited about because it's so pretty. Oh my gosh, there's Hidden Mickey. Look right. Hidden Mickey, there it is. So a reminder, we are staying in Magnolia Bend, which has the more mansion style buildings that the rooms are in. And of course, those beautiful princess banners. So this pathway to my left leads over to Port Orleans French Quarter, which is not reopened yet. So that pathway is blocked right now. But this canal here is the Sasagula River. And we'll probably see some boats passing because there is boat transportation to Disney Springs, which is where Sasagula leads. I really love the names of the buildings at this resort. Like our building is called Pate Place, which I just want to say with a Louisiana accent, which I don't know how to do. I am from the South, but I'm certainly not from Louisiana. And that is a different kind of south. We're gonna pop out of Magnolia Bend for now though to head back to the lobby and check out a lot of the dining options, some of the recreation, um, see some of the things that you can do while you're at this resort. You'll spot lots of bridges around this resort, which I love because I love a bridge. It's a weird thing to love, but it's just relaxing to walk over water. With 2,000 rooms, this resort is huge. So it is very, very, very spread out. That means that preferred rooms are ever important if you've got mobility issues or just want to be a little bit closer to the dining and the bus stop. Every resort, um, sorry, every area does have a bus stop and no room is more than a 10 minute walk from a bus stop. So that's convenient at least even if internal stops aren't the most convenient thing when you are on the bus. We are going to hop on the bus and see how long it takes to get through those four internal stops a little bit later. This resort is one of our top rated on allears.net. Viewers tend to love this resort. So if you like it, go ahead and let us know. Leave a review on allears.net. And if you don't like it, you can let us know that too. So before we head back to the lobby, you can find the boat transportation to Disney Springs just outside of the lobby. You've got these Sasagula River boats. The ride is very short, about six minutes long. And it does get pretty busy, the boats, run um, pretty full, especially around dinner time, because lots of folks are headed to get their dinner at Disney Springs. 
but I noticed there was also bus transportation to Disney Springs available too. You can find that entrance right here next to Riverside Levee, which is where you can rent bicycles. They have lots of Surrey bikes for rent, which is awesome. I love when the resorts have Surrey bikes. That's one of my favorite things about the boardwalk. So it's super cool that you can grab a Surrey bike and ride it around here. So there's also fireworks cruises out of here that you can rent here and fishing excursions, which is super neat. Plus cane pool fishing at the fishing hole. Reopening days don't tend to be super busy, but I have seen more people here than I've seen at some of my other reopening day tours. Um, it's a popular resort and it's large, so good amount of people were checking in a little earlier. Let's see how the lobby's looking now. Handful of people, but still not super busy. Now you, if you are checking in at check-in time right at three, you might see a lot more folks in the lobby, so don't be too worried. They will have a lot of cast members around to help assist folks. If you're looking for a bit of recreation, you might want to stop by Medicine Show Arcade. This arcade is open 24 hours, and I guess if I couldn't sleep in Disney World, I would definitely come play some video games in here. Lots of fun classic video games, plus some more modern ones. Like I mentioned earlier, the lobby building is deemed to be the Sasagula Steamboat Company, so it's supposed to be built as if you're checking out for your voyage on a steamboat. Occasionally, you can find caricature artists in the lobby building here, and there is a place where, at times, you'll be able to learn about the Disney Vacation Club. My favorite thing in this main sort of entrance lobby area is this model of a Sasebo River boat, which is so cute. Your main shopping location at this resort is gonna be Fulton's General Store, which, again, has the really adorable Old South theming to it. And once we head in, you'll find that it's pretty large. Like many of the other resort hotel stores, this does have a lot of standard Disney merchandise that you'll find all over Disney World, kitchenware, clothing, and things like that, plus some candy and snacks. My favorite part about this store is that there are figures of Disney characters. There's Huey, Dewey, and Louie. And then I see Goofy and Mickey's nephews over here. Figures like these in the stores are very old school Disney to me. They just like hit me right in the face with nostalgia. So I absolutely love this. There is some Port Orleans Riverside specific merchandise, like these beautiful prints or these lovely stained glass style ornaments. I really like when the resorts have merchandise because if you've got your favorite resort, you can rep it while you're at home, which I think is just a neat way to show your Disney love. Oh my gosh, it's Donald. I didn't even see him because he has a box on his head. All right, I don't see Mickey, but I do see snacks and essentials like medicine and things like that, plus some cold beverages that you can snag while you're in here. I'm from the South, so that Old South charm that's in this general store that's all over this resort is really nostalgic and, and cozy to me. Just next door is River Roost Spirits and Victuals. Now, this is the resort's lounge location. There's a lot of seating in here. I've seen people hanging out in here all day, even when it wasn't quite open yet. Uh, now it is open, and there's big band music, full bar, in here some southern inspired drinks are available and lots of the drinks that you can find at bars around disney world as well the most exciting part about river's roost is that you can catch live music in here most evenings and oh my oh my gosh my name is on that board <laughs> it says quincy but many times you can find yeehaw bob in here who is a very popular live music artist who plays here i'm hoping we'll get to see him tonight fingers crossed now there is a full table service restaurant here with Boatwright's Dining Hall, a little bit further down. Now this is supposed to be themed as a place where they're working on boats, which is why you've got this unfinished boat all throughout here. It's a casual dining experience with a lot of like Louisiana inspired eats. Um, unfortunately, it is not set to reopen today and a cast member told me that it probably will be opening around December. You can, of course, keep an eye on allears.net to make sure that you see when Boat Rights is going to be open. We will keep you in the loop with all the updates. Besides, I would very much like a taste of that Mississippi mud pie creme brulee that they've been known to serve here. Doesn't that sound amazing? And our final stop is the Riverside Mill Food Court, which is a food court fair similar to what you'll see at the Value Resorts. Um, there's five stations, bakery, grill, pizza and pasta, specialties, and sandwiches. This spot does serve breakfast, lunch, and dinner, and does have some grab-and-go items as well if you need them. 
You can also sometimes find some specialty desserts in the bakery case. Specifically right now, they've got the cookies and cream cupcake and a 50th celebration cheesecake, of course. Reopening day, again, not super busy. It's also 3.40, so not exactly a major meal time. There are not a lot of folks in here, but this location can get busy during major meal times, especially when this resort is in full swing around busier times. It does serve 2,000 guest rooms. There might be a lot of seating, but that seating can certainly fill up if there are lots of folks in here. My personal favorite part about Riverside, Riverside Mill Food Court is that it's got this big water wheel outside, which is connected in here to an actual real working cotton press. So I've seen cotton presses like on in historical buildings and things like that, but it's crazy that there's literally just one in here. And who'd have thunk that you can get all your beverages from right next to the cotton press. This location also has some of the longest hours of any of the dining locations here. Like boat rides when it's open is only open for dinner. And the lounge is usually open in the afternoon and dinner time. This one is open from 7 a.m. to 11 p.m. most of the time. And those hours might vary, but it's typically gonna be open all day. Now one offering that has yet to return, but used to be an option here, it was horse-drawn carriage rides that would take you all around this resort, which is a little pricey, but very romantic or fun for kiddos who like horses and things like that. Now we're headed off a bridge, over a bridge, not off a bridge, that'd be bad. We're headed over a bridge to Old Man Island, which is the main pool area at this resort and recreation. There's a lot of options over here, actually. So Old Man Island is inspired by the story of Tom Sawyer, which obviously is a classic Southern tale. And it is home to the resort's main pool, the only non-quiet pool. There are five quiet pools, which is a lot. And I guess with that many rooms, you'll need that many, but this is the main not quiet pool. Doesn't have a name, just the Old Man Island pool. Disney refers to this pool as an old fashioned swimming hole. And it's got some junk strewn around and a 95 foot sawmill slide. Plus you've got all the pool recreation, so definitely fun for your kiddos. Next to the pool, you'll find Muddy Rivers Pool Bar, which is um, one of the nicer pool bars in my opinion. It's got a covered porch, which is pretty large. There's plenty of room on it. And then they have beer, wine, sangria, some non-alcoholic options. And then they have like specialty Disney cocktails, but they also even have a few like themed cocktails that go here. Now the pathways around this resort are a little bit meandering. They can be a bit notorious for not taking you the fastest route ne necessarily, but there are plenty of signs around to show you which direction to go. It's especially true on the Alligator Bayou side. If you want the most direct route, you're gonna wanna check out those signs. Old Man Island also has a campfire where looks like tonight it will be running from 6 p.m. to 7 p.m. weather permitting. It's pretty cool. Great way to meet your fellow resort guests. And then there's the Old Man Island playground, which I thought wasn't super themed, like it's just regular plastic playground equipment, but it does kind of have like a river style climbing wall and then a water wheel. So it is a little bit themed, even if it's not as like spectacularly themed as the rest of the resort. Perhaps the most unique thing about Old Man Island is that there is a fishing hole. <laughs> it's a catch and release fishing hole. So you can catch, um, you can catch a bunch of fish here. It's really neat. Uh, just by renting a fishing rod. So rates at the fishing hole, it's $6.39 per half hour per pole, or you can do $15.98 for a family special. And you can catch all sorts of fish when they're open. I just think that's a super unique thing to have here. Like there are fishing excursions all around Disney World, but something that's a lot more accessible for you to do on your resort day with an actual like catch and release fishing hole. It's really cool. It's, I think it's a great way for families to spend time together. Maybe I'll make Molly do it with me sometime. So there are three bridges that lead to Old Man Island. One of them is from the lobby area, one from Magnolia Bend, and one from Alligator Bayou, which is where we're headed. And again, these buildings are gonna be a lot less mansion-y and a lot more backwoods cottagey. And I'll tell you right now, I'm seeing some peek through the trees and this literally looks like the houses in the rural areas where I grew up. So part of the story of this resort is that as the folks who were building along the Sasagula moved upriver, they used all of their good building supplies in Magnolia Bend. And the further up they got, they had to use more, they had to get more creative, which is why you've kind of got the like grand, like more all 
the same mansions on Magnolia Bend. And then the further you get up, you have the more homey buildings. I actually, I really love these. I kind of wish I was an alligator bayou. Now there aren't um, elevators in Alligator Bayou. So if you do want to stay in this area or are staying in this area, make sure you note that if you have mobility issues with stairs because the cast members will do what they can to accommodate that. All right, remember how I talked about how it's easy to get lost in here earlier? Here's a pro tip. If you stay on the gray, you're gonna be in the more direct routes. These pinker pathways off to the side tend to be pretty meandery. Honestly, Florida is such a good place to do a Louisiana style resort because this is just, I mean, that looks str like straight by you. In general, when you're in Disney World, you're going to find a good amount of wildlife with the resorts, but this one is especially lush. So I've seen a lot of lizards, a lot of squirrels, and several herons with the water so close. So that's pretty cool, but something to keep in mind. I am obsessed with the backwoods vibes of these buildings. They just seem so like cozy and homey. Speaking of quiet, we've stumbled upon a quiet pool. So there are five leisure pools around the resort. You won't be too far from one, one no matter where your room is. These are open 24 hours a day and all the pools have a laundry facility. So you're not too far from laundry either. As you can see, there's literally no one at this quiet pool. So you could certainly have a relaxing time. There was no one at the one over near my room either. I literally just started going the wrong way. So it's definitely a little tricky in here. Magnolia Terrace is a lot more straightforward because you're on a main path by the river and then you sort of walk up into each section. But uh, I just got really turned around over here. Not that I mind because it's so pretty. Oh my gosh, look at these berries. Wow, those are so pretty and vibrant. I've never seen berries like that. Also, the gardens at this resort are award-winning, and I can certainly see why, especially with the massive difference in the gardens of Alligator Bend and the gardens of, sorry, Alligator Bayou and the gardens of Magnolia Bend, but they're both equally beautiful. So horticulture put in work on this one. All right, Port Orleans Riverside does have internal bus stops. The order that they go in is the North Bend, and then they go around ending at the lobby. So if you get on the bus at the lobby, you are not gonna have to go by any of the other internal bus stops. But when you're coming back, if you wanna get off on the at the lobby, it's gonna be your last stop. And look, here's where you can see the intersection of Alligator Bayou and Magnolia Bend. There are only four internal bus stops. So it's not overwhelming like the seven over at Caribbean Beach, but the buses do tend to stop at Port Orleans French Quarter as well. There's only one stop over there. So just keep in mind that once that resort reopens, which I think it will be about to by the time you watch this, then you're gonna have a number of bus stops, probably five. So build in a little bit of extra time, maybe an extra 10 to 20 minutes to make sure that you get to the park when you want to and your travel times don't get long with those internal stops. Now, right now, I wanna head back up to the lobby area and also get an idea for how long those internal stops take. So I am going to hop on a bus and I can get on any bus because they're all going to stop at the lobby last. Bus transportation is primarily the name of the game here at Riverside. You've got bus transportation to every location in Disney World, including Disney Springs, but then you also have that boat transportation to Disney Springs. Conveniently enough, the internal resort shuttle is here, which will also get me to the lobby. It just kind of runs between all of the internal resort stops. All right, so I'm pulling away from the bus stop. I'm gonna see how long it takes for me to get around to the lobby. I'm at the North Depot, so it's just two stops to the lobby, I believe. And I'm on the internal resort shuttle, and this runs all day, and it just runs to the resort bus stop. So if you just wanna get around, this is a great option for you. Now, keep in mind, you can also take any park bus if you are going clockwise and not starting at the final stop which is the lobby stop so that's an option for you you can hop on any park bus but i recommend asking a bus driver if they plan to stop at stops before you hop on just to make sure that you don't get trapped and find yourself somewhere weird like blizzard beach there's french quarter that we're passing very colorful buildings over there it is inspired by new orleans french quarter and when it does reopen which it should be in two weeks then you can also easily walk to the dining options over there if you're staying at Riverside, which includes Sassagula Floatworks and Food Factory, Scat Cats Club, and Mardi Gras. And just keep in mind, 
you can find Mickey beignets over there. And just like that, a quick six minute bus ride later and I'm at the lobby. Now, my ride was just six minutes long, but we barely stopped because there was no one at the bus stop and I only went to stations. So most likely, the minimum that it would take to ride all four stations would be 12 minutes. But you have to keep in mind that loading times could mean that that takes longer. If anybody is loading a ECV or a wheelchair, that's gonna increase your waiting time. So it's probably a good idea to build in, again, probably 20 minutes, a minimum 20 minutes into your travel time to make sure that you get where you're going when you wanna get where you're going. In general, we always recommend building in about an hour of travel time. Um, so always safe to do that. And I think that that would give you plenty of time to get where you wanted to go. But if there are waits, which there can be since this is such a large resort, you wanna make sure that you make it there. Now this resort does have plenty of parking and they do have parking lots that are around by your room. So you don't have to park out here at the lobby if you're all the way back in Alligator Bayou. But um, keep in mind that parking at moderate resorts is $20 per night. So you will be automatically charged that once you check in. All right, one thing left to do and that's dinner. And I think we're gonna head to River's Roost. But here's the thing, I'm hoping for some live entertainment. So I'm gonna go take a, take a, take a little relaxation time, maybe get some work done. And then hopefully we'll be back at River's Roost while there's live entertainment. Maybe yeehaw bob. Hello, this is Quincy from the future. So earlier they let me know that they did not have the frozen beverages, but they might get them a little later in the day. It's later in the day. I came to check if they had the frozen beverages. They didn't, so I went ahead and I'm reviewing their most popular drink. All right, so I went for a classic Mai Tai because they actually do have specialty frozen drinks here, but none were available this time. So I went ahead and grabbed just uh, the most popular drink, which he said was a Mai Tai. So this is the Captain's Mai Tai, which is a drink that you can get at a lot of pool bars around Disney World. It's Captain Morgan Original Spiced Rum, Amaretto, and Tropical Juices topped with a float of Plantation Original Dark Rum. It's got pineapple in it. Let's give it a sip. Mm. It's a good Mai Tai. It's actually, um, Mai Tais, the Mai Tais here are, are nice because they are a classic Mai Tai. They're not as like sweet, crazy sweet as some other things, which is pretty great. Um, they're still sweet, like a Mai Tai is a sweet drink anywhere, but Disney just has a good Captain Morgan Mai Tai. And so if you like a rum drink, if you like a fruity beverage, if you're looking for that classic pool island flavor, this could be a great option. Thank you for bearing with me on our time traveling journey. Now Quincy from the from the past will see you. Back in the back in the past. The present. Whatever. Back to her. And I'm back outside of a very crowded river roost. <laughs> river roost is already packed. There is not a seat in the whole place. And there are a bunch of people standing around waiting. So we'll see if I can even snag a seat. Um, but I mean, either way, I'm gonna get to see Yeehaw Bob, who is in fact the, the the act tonight. All right, so can confirm River Roost did not get any less busy. It is wild in here. Yeehaw Bob has arrived. There was cheering, there was chanting. Everyone is very excited that he's here. I'm so excited to see him. I have not been able to eat anything because there haven't hasn't been a table. It's completely standing room only. <laughs> Bob on his first night back. That is so cool. Um, but I didn't know I was gonna have to stay out an hour without food, so I'm headed back to the food court um, for dinner. All right, so most of the eats here, again, are standard food court eats, but they have jambalaya, because this is Port Orleans, baby, so I think I'm going jambalaya. All right, so for dinner, I grabbed the Louisiana-style jambalaya. It's rice, it's got sausage, it's got scallions on top. Um, there's some vegetables in there. And she warned me that it's a little on the hot side, like spicy hot. So I'm excited about that. And then we've got this beautiful piece of cornbread, which I think will go with it very well. All right, surprisingly late dinner. Let's see how the jambalaya tastes. It's good. It's certainly not the best jambalaya I've ever had. But there's a surprising amount of heat to it. I'm definitely feeling the spice. My mouth feels hot in like a spicy way. There's sausage in it, which is really tasty. And actually it kind of tastes like a sausage maybe has a dry rub on it, which is what's making it a little spicy. Um, it is a little salty, so if you are salt averse, like over salt averse, then you might want to skip this one. 
Um, but if you are at the food court and you're looking for something that's a little more thematic, something that isn't a burger or pizza or pasta, go for the jambalaya. It fits the theme. It's pretty tasty. While I might go out of the way for the jambalaya over at Boat Rides, I'm not necessarily going to go out of the way for the jambalaya here at the food court. But if I'm at Port Orleans, or even if I'm at French Quarter, or even if I'm coming here to see Yeehaw Bob, I might grab the jambalaya. Especially if it's that hard to find a seat in the river roost. All right. So now it is a beautiful evening. I am so tired from seeing Yeehaw Bob for the first time. What an amazing act. And I have a stomach full of jambalaya. So I'm hanging back to the room. But before I do, I wanna talk a little bit, well, while I do actually, I'm walking, but I wanna talk a little bit about pros and cons. So pros of staying at Disney's Port Orleans Riverside. It is a wonderful theme. You are absolutely going to have a good time here. It has this beautiful Old South Louisiana theme, which is amazing. There is some awesome dining, although some of it is closed right now. The dining is pretty cool. You've got those royal rooms and in general, a great room variety. There's lots of different views. There are fifth sleeper options. There are fifth uh, king bed options. So lots of room variety to, to look at. And you've got the price. So you're getting a reasonable price for a pretty nice hotel. So it definitely feels like you get your value. There is a reason this hotel is so popular and it's pretty nice to have that proximity to Disney Springs as well if you want just infinite dining options. Now a con is the size. As you can see, this resort is super spread out. There are four internal bus stops, which can certainly slow you down. So that size is definitely a con. That also adds to the con of crowds. There can be a lot of people here. There certainly aren't today because it is reopening day, but there can be a ton of people at this resort. That means long wait times at the buses. It means not being able to get in for dinner. And even today with not that many people here, I couldn't get in for dinner at the River Roost. So that's something to keep in mind is that this is a large resort and there's going to be a lot of people staying here, unlike some of the smaller resorts around property. But Port Orleans Riverside is popular for a reason. You've got location, you've got great rooms, you've got great dining, and you've got a wonderful theme. So if this seems like the kind of spot that you'll want to take your family, you've got the benefit of an all right value as well as Disney hotels go. So might be something to look into. You really have to decide if it's worth it for your party. All right, folks, and I am so tired. So I am off. I will see you in the morning. I need to, I'm holding my leftovers. I'm gonna put them on, a gra on the ground because this is important. See you in the morning. Good morning. It's a brand new day. I slept in a royal room like a princess and it was amazing. Um, and now I think we're gonna go grab some breakfast and head on over to Epcot, which means we didn't have to get up as early as when we go to Magic Kingdom, which is always a plus for your Epcot day. So I think we're gonna have breakfast over at the Sasagula food court. And then we're gonna take a bus on over to Epcot to see how long those travel times are. Check out at Disney World Resort Hotels is at 11 a.m. They do have a limited availability of checkout at noon. You can request a late checkout, but that's not guaranteed it is just a request. But checkout is also automatic, so you'll get your bill the morning that you leave. You can check that out, and as long as everything looks right, you're good to just go. I am sure you're wondering how those beds were. I know that some of those themed beds can sometimes be a little bit less comfortable than a regular Disney hotel bed, but I am happy to report that my original bed science theory was correct, and that it felt a lot like a regular Disney hotel bed. I slept great, had those amazing pillows that I love. So I think even on those themed beds, you'll get a good night's sleep. Like I mentioned yesterday, the Riverside Mill Food Court does open at 7 a.m. So even if you do have that earlier morning, you should be able to grab breakfast beforehand if you want. So when the hotels reopened, a lot of these food courts were converted to a mobile order, extremely mobile order heavy style, where a lot of the stations weren't open for guests to walk up. But in one of the recently reopened resorts, you can't just walk right up and order what you're looking for. I think we're gonna get a bagel breakfast sandwich. So for my breakfast, I grabbed the bacon, egg, and cheese bagel breakfast sandwich, which I'm excited about. Obviously, I've gotten Mickey Waffles at Food Courts before. I've gotten the whole platter, so I wanted to try something a little different this time. And then I also just grabbed a regular espresso. Now, this did not come from like a full Mastrina. It came from like one of those like instant espresso machines, but that's fine. I got cream and sugar for it, and I got hot sauce for my bagel. So let's see how it tastes. All right. 
It's certainly not my favorite breakfast that I've ever had at a Disney World hotel. In fact, it's not even my favorite that I've had at a food court. Um, the bagel isn't toasted, which is a big bummer for me because, like, toasting the bagel adds so much to a breakfast sandwich. Um, so there's just a lot of bread. And there's a good amount of bacon, good amount of egg, good amount of cheese, which is all really good. But um, without that toasted bagel, it's just kind of like a lot of food with not a ton of flavor. I'm super glad I grabbed this hot sauce. Um, also, this packet hot sauce isn't that hot, so I'm literally going to load like two packets onto this. But I do think it would give me the like fuel I needed to start the day. But I'm just not sure I would get this one again. Um, it's not that I don't like it. It's just that I know there are better options like Mickey Waffles and even like the, the sausage and stuff I like a little bit better than this. But it's still okay. If you are looking for something that's a little more like grab and go, this might be a good option for you because you can just kind of like hold it in one hand on like the platters, which are more unwieldy. Um, but otherwise, I might say stick to Mickey Waffles or even get breakfast once you get to the theme park. That's something that I like to do. I prefer to grab some of the really cool breakfast options that they have actually in the parks. All right, trying out my espresso. I went ahead and put one cream and one sugar in it because black instant espresso sounds scary to me. It's better than I was expecting. It's not amazing espresso flavor, but it's a lot better than like the K-cup coffee that you might get in the hotel room. So I don't know, I would grab this again. Like if I were headed to the theme parks, I might skip because I could get Joffrey's. Um, and this is actually Joffrey's coffee, but I can get like the shaken Jamaican cold brew. So I might go actually to a Joffrey's location. Plus if I'm here late enough, like I am right now, I could hop on a boat, go to Disney Springs and go to the full Joffrey's location over there or Starbucks or whatever I wanted. So um, I would grab this again if I didn't want to leave, if I just wanted a coffee from the food court, but there's definitely better coffee around Disney World. One thing I will note about the Riverside Mill food court is that though it wasn't super busy today, it is only the second day after reopening and it's not really a peak meal time. It's a little late for breakfast on a theme park day. So it wasn't busy while I was in there, but it definitely can get super busy. There's a reason they have all that seating. All right, it's about Epcot time. Let's go see if we can catch a bus. So even with all the internal stops, the main bus stop at South Depot, right outside the lobby, can get pretty crowded. It's not right now because it's a little later, but there are some people headed to Epcot. That's very specific for when we'll see an Epcot bus. Just use bus. Disney buses come about every 20 minutes and I must have gotten here right after the Epcot bus pulled away because I've been sitting here for 20 minutes, but it's here. All right, my bus ride was 15 minutes, which is one of the longer bus rides I've taken. Um, Port Orleans isn't super close to Epcot, so it makes sense, but 15 minute ride. Not too bad. All right, I'm here at Epcot. I'm at the front gate, so now I can go in and and get some more coffee because that espresso was just the baseline and have a good day. So 15 minute bus ride, not too bad. Most parks are gonna be about a 15 minute bus ride from Port Orleans. Closest thing is gonna be Disney Springs. Very short bus ride, very short boat ride, but I didn't have too bad of a transportation trip over here, even waiting the full 20 minutes for the bus to come. All right, and that just about does it for our tour of Disney's Port Orleans Resort Riverside. I had an amazing time. This is an absolutely gorgeous resort. I am so excited to swing by French Quarter when it reopens in a few weeks, and that video will be coming out soon. Go ahead and let me know in the comments where else you would like to see me tour. And if you like this video, go ahead and like and subscribe. You can follow us on social media at All Ears Set. And until next time, I'm Quincy and I'll see you soon. Bye. Want more All Ears videos? Click here. And want to subscribe? You can do that right here. Make sure you hit that notification bell so you don't miss any of our videos. Thanks for watching today. We'll see you real soon.